Good morning. This is the Bolton Administrator Show. I'm Bob Mora, uh, Bolton's first selectman. I'm your guest host for today. Um, this is a live show that is, uh, it, the, today is March 18th, and the show is uh, live every first and third Tuesday of every month, and then the show is rebroadcast the other Tuesdays and periodically, uh, depending upon the show and, and its impact on, on the community. Today, we're fortunate that I have a, a guest with us, and it's our newest member of our Bolton family. It's Trooper Brian Contenta. Brian joins us. Um, I've been with us for a few weeks, and Brian, welcome to town. Hey, thank you, Bob. Thank you for having me. Yeah, my, our pleasure. Um, well, today, uh, we want our show is basically centered around introducing Brian and, and letting uh, uh, our folks know who you are, a little bit of your background. And with that, um, perhaps you can just give us uh, a little bit of background of, of your police background and how you became a trooper. Right. Yeah, again, uh, my name is Brian Gatenta. I'm uh, signed out of Troop K in Colchester. And, uh, just started the Bolton resident trooper position about two months ago. Um, I started my career as a part-time police officer in uh, Berkshire County, Massachusetts, and uh, I did a few years as a part-time police officer, and I uh, got hired by the Hartford Police Department in uh, 2003, where I did a little over two years there. And uh, then I ended up going back to Berkshire County on a full-time basis. Um, that's where I'm originally from. Okay. And um, yeah, I served as a police officer for uh, five years, and I was hired by the state police in 2010. Wow, that's a that's that's a really diversified yeah. career coming in. I mean, in uh, a lot of our our previous troopers, uh, their their backgrounds were. The academy and right. into the troop. Yep. Uh, a number of our, our resident troopers in the past were also former right. military into okay. the troop. I don't know if you were. I in, was in, not. You're no. not in the service. So, no. you, but you had a really interesting uh, background. Yeah. And you know, Berkshire is that's in up in uh, western Massachusetts. Correct, western Massachusetts on the New York line. Yep. Okay, and it was a, what, a community, well, not very big communities out there. No, um, it was uh, in the town of Lenox, um, very similar to Bolton. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, and that's, uh, I really enjoyed working in Lenox, and um, that's one of the things I really seeked out in working in Bolton, applying in Bolton, because uh, I do like the town. Uh, I worked for Troop K for four years, so I had the pleasure um, covering the town of Bolton as a patrol trooper, and I uh, got to meet a lot of the people, and I uh, got to see the town, and uh, really grew a liking for it, so um, I was excited to see when the position opened up um, for the resident trooper. Great, role. well, th that's that's excellent. You know, and um, and with your background, I think it really uh, provides an element that uh, we normally don't get in in, in a lot of our, our resident troopers, right. having having worked with a you know, as as a a patrol officer right. in a smaller community. Um, and in your career, as uh, you were a resident trooper, I mean a, a regular, if you were a regular trooper, yep. I know, as opposed to irregular, <laughs> but a regular <laughs> trooper, um, how, how does a, a, a trooper become a resident trooper? I mean, what's, what's the process and what's the criteria and yeah, how does um, it all work? Yeah, um, I could give you the uh, Bolton hiring process, for example. Um, Obviously, there's two troopers in Bolton. You have your day shift trooper, and then you have your evening shift trooper. So until one of those troopers um, retires, gets promoted, or takes another position, um, really is not much announcing for that job. So um, when uh, Trooper Cook, who uh, I replaced, um, ended up going into town in Varix, Troop right. C, um, when he uh, made that move, made that transfer, um, the position opened up. And uh, what the state police does, they uh, do a type, and uh, the type gets sent to all the barracks, and it just um, explains what the position that is opening up. And uh, I was in roll call, and um, I heard that the position was opening up. I was very, very excited. Again, I've been trying to keep an eye on Bolton, just trying to see mm -hmm. if there were any positions to open up so I could make sure my application got in. And uh, yeah, I uh, put my application in. It required a resume. And um, <clears throat> once uh, the closing, 
um, ended for the position, um, an interview is done, and the interview is um, done by a few state police staff. Uh, my interview was made up of a lieutenant, master sergeant, and sergeant. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we interviewed for it and uh, found out about a week later with the results, and uh, I was happy to say I got the position. Good. So. Well, you know, the short period we've had uh, that we've worked with you, I have to say, it's, it's been a real pleasure. Well, thank to you. Really, thank really you. appreciate you having uh, coming on board. Thank you. It's interesting, you know, that. Uh, the, the resident trooper, uh, the, the work of a resident trooper is really somewhat different than your regular patrol sure yes, uh, yes. trooper. Yep. Uh, you're, um, you're here, you're within the community, yep. and your, I, I guess, your scope or area is is much more right. m defined and small yep. with the work out of. I yep. mean, I'm sure prior at the troop, where were you stationed prior to? Um, right out of Troop K. So oh, you again, were out of yeah, K? Yeah, right out of Troop K. I okay. um, did four years as a patrol trooper. Okay. And um, that's where I got to learn about Bolton yep. um, covering this area. So, yep. as, as a patrol officer, you, I mean, I'm assuming you're basically on the road and simply on call. Correct. Is that yep. pretty much? Yeah, um, that's correct. Uh, being a patrol trooper and a resident trooper is very different. Um, being a patrol trooper, um, you know, you have a different area of the troop that you cover. Um, troop K primarily covers 12 towns, and it's made up of five different patrols. So um, being a patrol trooper, you could have North Patrol one day, and then the next day you could be all the way across the troop and cover an East Patrol. Right, so, nice. um, yeah, and, uh, you know, you're responsible for a lot more towns. Um, again, you could cover anywhere of the 12 towns of your shift. So you're um, very thin spread and uh, you're pretty much just going call to call to call. And it's a very fast pace in the criminal aspect of calling calls for service, so it, it is very busy, yes. And it's, it must be difficult because you're, I mean, Bolton is on, is on the, the edge of, of Troop K, so Correct. it's a huge area to cover. Correct. And within that area, uh, the demographics Mm -hmm. are, are significantly changing. You go from yeah. like Bolton to Wyndham, Willimantic. Correct. Uh, Correct. It's, it's Colchester. It, it's yep. just, it, it's quite different. I guess it's the, the good thing about, I would think, of uh, being a resident trooper in mm -hmm. a community, yep. you actually get to know the community. That's correct. That's and, correct. And with that uh, leads into my next yep. my topic that whether uh, you know, residents know, we, ha we have an office. Uh, at it's right across from the town hall. Correct. Um, where we, we've 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 set it up is it purely as as our res resident troopers office, yep. um, so that if if a resident has issues or you know wants to uh, discuss certain things, they can they can contact you. Absolutely. You can set up an appointment. They can come in. Absolutely. And, yep. and do that. Now, in in recent months, there's been. Um, a, a real change as to how how folks are di the residents and the all other troopers are dispatched right. with the consolidation. Right. Um, uh, prior to uh, several months ago, you would give the Colchester barracks a call Correct. and make the contacts, and you'd go on from there. That's now changed. It's now uh, uh, dispatched all out of Tallinn ba Tallinn barracks. Yes. Correct. Yep. Troop C exactly. It's troop C. Yep. So if someone were to call you, if yep. they had the old number. Does it get transferred anymore? They really have to call the new number. I would highly recommend you call a new number. Right. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure if that's a working number anymore. Right. So I um, knew they were going to phase it out. Correct. But but I have the new number. You were okay. you, were, you were kind enough to give it to me. Yep. And it's uh, if you wanted to, to contact uh, Trooper Contenta, you could yep. call 860-896-3. And your extension is four zero eight four. That's correct. All yeah. right, and that and that would uh, either get you to you or through a voicemail system. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get to a voicemail system. Um, if I'm working, usually dispatch will relay that uh, message to me. Right. So um, yeah, please, if uh, anything I could help you with, any questions, or just want to stop in the office, I'd uh, be happy to meet you and uh, have any um, questions answered for you. Good. Now that and just to make it clear. This is just for routine calls. Correct. Exactly. If you have an emergency, yes. Yes. 911. Absolutely. And um, just that that doesn't change. Correct. And, and w since 
we're talking a little bit a bit off topic since yeah. we're talking about the, the new dispatch center and how 911 works a little right. differently than than it has in the past. I think in the past, uh, if you dialed uh, a 911, it, it goes, I believe it went through Tallinn, the uh, fire, and then if it went to police, it got directed to police. Correct. Yeah. And then it would be the dispatcher at, at the K, uh, Correct. Troop K would then issue it out. Now right. it goes to a dispatch center in Tallinn, and I'm assuming it, it worked a similar way, that you were then dispatched from Tallinn? Right. Um, our call takers are now in town. Right. Um, even though they are in Tallinn, um, they do get it into the computers. And then the dispatcher is the one who dispatches the troopers to that emergency okay. or call for service. Yeah. So it's structured a little bit differently. It today. is. It is. It's so, a new so system. So there's a person who receives it. Correct. And then that call, whoever it is, is then sent to a dispatcher. Correct. Dispatcher makes a decision who he, who he sends out. That is correct. He, yeah, who he, she sends out. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. So that's... It is newer. It's been, it you know, like any other system, um, you know, there's been a few glitches along the way, but, yep. uh, I, you know, I've, I've, also, I've met with the, the folks down at, at K, okay. and the officers, and they, you know, right. they pretty much assured us that, yep. yeah, the, the flaws that are there have, right. have been pretty much worked out and are working out. Right. Uh, so I, I think folks can feel fairly uh, comfortable that, if they if they give that 911 call, there'll be a timely response. Absolutely. So, and um, speaking of response and and, and all that, uh, I just want to kind of re review a thing. You mentioned it earlier that yep. since we have we have two resident troopers here, and there's a, you're not on at the same time. You're obviously Correct. at you, well, you're you're a you're the day if you will. I hate to use day shift, but let's yep. use day. But it is a day shift and evening right. shift, right. Uh, and then we your your hours of patrol are vary because yes, quite frankly, you don't want to tell the bad guys when you're here and when you're not here. <laughs> that's I mean, correct. That's, uh, yep. There's yep. a reason for for varying yep. uh, uh, right. our, our patrols, but throughout throughout the week and uh, week week that includes weekdays yep. and weekends. That is correct. In the yep. uh, I mean. Your, your ship varies so that you're, you'll be out there, you'll be patrolling. Mm -hmm. And I, I noticed um, that you have one of the newer patrol cars yes, that, that's yeah. a, um, yep. a more modern version of, of, we figure, the old Ford, right, the, right. the Ford that's out there. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, is this, this the new trend in, in, uh, in what's happening, or did you, are you expecting? One of the experimental guys. Honestly. No, um, yeah. Again, the uh, Crown Ford or the Ford Crown Victoria. Yep. Um, they discontinued those in 2012, I believe, ah. which kind of left um, again municipal police and state police um, agencies throughout the country kind of like, well, what are we going to go do now? Because the um, Ford Crown Victoria has been used for so many years. Right. And it's been very reliable. It's got a lot of room. It's a great vehicle. Yep. So um, our agency, um, and again, I'm not sure exactly um, the studies that were used or exactly how they came up with their decision, um, but it kind of looks like we went in two different directions. Um, you have the Ford Police Interceptor, which a lot of people think is a Taurus. Right. It just looks like a Taurus. Um, it's actually a lot different um, under the shell of the vehicle. but. Yeah, it's got the biggest yeah. engine they make. It, it's very adequate for what we do. I'm happy with it. And um, <laughs> the other one is the uh, Ford Explorer. So it right. kind of looks like um, depending on uh, what unit you have with the state police yeah. or um, what that trooper does for work in the state police, it um, looks like we're going to the Taurus, and then some troopers are going to the Ford Explorer. But, and Explorer is an all-wheel drive vehicle, right? Um, I'm not sure. The, tour, um, the police uh, um, interceptor that I have, that is all-wheel drive. Um, I'm guessing the Explorer would be all-wheel drive. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, it is sure. all-wheel drive. Um, my police interceptor is exactly. Yep. Well, so, you, around here you need it. Yes, you do, especially this, this winter. This winter was a good example. Absolutely. I was, yeah. I was wondering how you were able to get around yeah. in the snowstorm. Right. Is, is, uh, I did have the vehicle for all the snowstorms and happened that I worked all the snowstorms. Right. So it, it was very good. No complaints. I was extremely happy with the vehicle. So, so far things have been very good with the police interceptor. You know, that's encouraging because one of the I mean the the uh, you know the Fords were great. They right. were they were rear yeah rear wheel drive. I can I can spit yep. that out. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know they had their limitations in that yeah. snowstorm. Absolutely, that's for sure. And sometimes you're trying to go up a driveway and your wheels are spinning. Right. The vehicle's not moving. Right. So it's a walking 
is your only option at that point. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's good. I'm, I'm yeah. well, glad to see that. Yeah. Now, part of what you <clears throat> do as a resident trooper, mm -hmm. um, it's you actually do part of uh, similar things that you did before. You you, you yeah. do set up sp uh, areas for uh, looking for speeders. Yes. Um, and, and and all the other issues that we look for. Yep. Uh, Seatbelt yep. enforcement. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I know we do periodic, um, particularly on the highway, Route 6 and yep. Interstate, we'll do periodic setups for right. really to, 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 to kind of slow the speed down. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, I know uh, w when it happens, sometimes we get calls, oh, how come they're out there mm -hmm. setting up? Well, right. it's simple because... Um, his, history has shown that uh, if you stop patrolling an area, the the median speed slowly creeps up. Absolutely, sure. So does. if the speed limit is 65 and you don't patrol it, it is 80. Absolutely. In in right, yep. yeah. in no time yeah. at all. That's for sure. So to to kind of keep things uh, under control, yep. the troop in cooperation with with the residents yep. will set up. And, and if you will hit, hit you the term, but hit an area, right? And and uh, and the word gets out, mm -hmm. it's there. Right. Average traffic flow slows down, yep. and we go from there. Yep. And and we have uh, in in the town of Olton, and with its troopers have uh, periodically set up in various areas of towns when, when we found that there were issues, yep. either uh, you know speeding issues or. Uh, People just blowing through traffic right. stops, etc. Yep. Um, you know, actually, one of the most popular spots of blowing signs is right in front of your office. It sure is. I mean, it, you literally it's, can park out yeah. there and just you, you, you could you could fill up a ticket book there. That's correct. Yep. But um, the um, that's that's one aspect mm -hmm. that you still do. It's the right. same as being out uh, on the other one. And I think um, going back to your to your uh, background as mm -hmm. as a, 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 tr a a police officer up in the Berkshires. Yep. The other side of it is really a <clears throat> more of a one-on-one -on -one with our residents. That, yes, yep. that's I, it has to be so different than being just a regular patrol officer. Yeah, I mean, that's um, one of the things that I really enjoy about being a resident trooper in Bolton is being able to stay in town and really getting to learn the community a lot more. Yep. Um, a patrol trooper, although they do learn a majority of the community and the people who live in that town. Um, it's just uh, 12 towns is hard to get to know everybody. Right. Um, being a resident trooper, kind of could take those uh, couple extra hours in my shift, um, go around, meet the local businesses. Yep. I try to spend a lot of time in the schools, get to know the teachers, get to know the kids. And um, yeah, it's just uh, great to kind of be able to make yourself more available to that town. And um, going back to the uh, speed thing as we're talking about in Bolton, as you know, Bolton um, has a lot of commuters coming and going. You have uh, Route 6 and Route 44 right off 384. And uh, right now, of course, you're always going to have your speeders, but our number one biggest issue is texting and driving. Um, there was a national study, I'm not sure um, where Connecticut plays, but it's involved that texting is the leading cause of car accidents and is uh, obviously the leading cause of reckless driving. And um, so that's one of our biggest focus is kind of turning into an ep epidemic based on all these car accidents from texting. Um, so even though we're still enforcing speed as, um, as much as we were before, we're finding that this texting is becoming very apparent. I'll be sitting there um, running radar and uh, people are so um, focused on their phone, they're driving by me on their phone because they're not looking they're where they're going. They're clueless that you're even, you're absolutely, even there. Absolutely. That absolutely. gives you a pretty good indication so, how, how yeah. they are not watching the road. Correct, correct. And yeah. um, it, it is, it's uh, it's really becoming a problem. And um, just to give you an example, uh, last week I was um, working in a neighboring town. I'm just helping out with um, the affair and I was in the crosswalk helping mm -hmm. people cross. And I'm in full uniform with a reflective um, state police traffic vest. This must have been the Maple Fest. It was the Maple mm -hmm. Fest, absolutely. And um, as I was trying to stop traffic for people to cross, there's a gentleman operating a vehicle, and I have both hands up to stop, and he's texting, doesn't even see me. And by the time I get his attention, by hitting his car because he was not looking at me, he was already in the crosswalk. So um, that turned into enforcement action because um, oh, yeah. it, was, it was awful decision to 
put people crossing at risk like that. So it is. It's been a big problem, and we're trying to put a lot of efforts into decreasing and stopping it. So well, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased you're doing that. Yep. And I'm assuming part of that is, is getting the word out to the students right. in school, yeah. our younger yep. driver. I mean, Absolutely. a younger driver is inexperienced as it is. Correct. Yep. And then texting on top of that yep. makes them basically uh, a lethal weapon, uh, Abs- frankly, yeah. on it's the road. It's a 2,000 pound missile, right? Coming right. On, and unfortunately, um, a lot of kids learn after the fact right. how dangerous it is because their car's already crashed. Um, hopefully no injuries, but you talk to them, they get it out of them, okay, I was texting, and they realize, yeah, this crash was caused because either I was reading something on my phone or I was trying to text something on my right. phone. So, yeah, it's, uh, we're, we're doing our best to try to stop well, it. Well, you know, I'm pleased to hear that because, I mean, I know you see all the uh, promos on TV about yeah. that, but it, bringing it down to the real world, yeah. it, it is, as you state, it is probably the, the biggest safety hazard it is out there today yep. Yep. and uh, it, uh, i'm glad to hear that that the troop is concentrating on that right. and, because uh, that's one that i i have to, i have to concur because i'm on my, my job i'm on yep. a road all Absolutely. the time yep. and you're always watching out for the other guy and you you, know, you just can't yeah can't anticipate somebody so involved in texting that they right. have no clue what they're doing right. where they are right yeah i mean yeah you, maybe they think they can multitask but yeah, it, not it's, that. It is not that. very distracting, and right. a lot of people are getting injured over it. So, well, yeah, that's. And then I'm going to go back to our, our community policing yep. uh, side of things, and that one of the one of the advantages uh, of of our community such as ours of having a, a resident trooper that if a resident has a concern or a problem, yep. they, I mean, I, and I think in the past and. And I know you're in, in the same position. Yep. But you walk them to come in and have them talk with you. Absolutely. Try and yep. do what you can to help them out and, yep. and move things forward. Because yep. I think a lot of a lot of what policing about is preventing things from happening rather right. than reacting to yes, things happening. Yes, deterring it, trying to get it before it's a big problem. Yes, we could usually control it before it right. comes out of control. Yes. Exactly. Because simple things sometimes get out. Neighbor issues and yep. whatever tend yep. to at times can get out of hand, right. and if they can be dealt with initially on a, uh, on a more calming one-to-one yeah. basis yep. with, a, with someone like yourself, with a resident, everyone benefits. Right. And, and, and I noticed the other day, um, I was at the, uh, at the high school, you were at yep. the PTO meeting, yep. you got Absolutely. introduced there, and, yep. and, uh, and I think I'm, and we really do appreciate you integrating your efforts with the schools because yep. that's you know, again, that's yeah. like, that's part of that same uh, sense of, of, of community that, <clears throat> pardon me, that a student who have an issue will, will feel comfortable enough right. to come up to you. Yep. And absolutely. you're not, quote, the enemy or, or right. have... No, we are absolutely here to help, um, you know, provide any kind of assistance we can. That's why I have an office. That's why it's right by the town hall. So you can come and sit down and we can talk and without having distractions or interruptions. Right. And, um, you know, I look forward to that. I highly encourage it. So, again, if uh, you see the cruiser parked outside the resident trooper office, there's a big sign. So right. there's no um, wondering where my office is. Right. Um, please come in, even just to say hi. Right. You know, and uh, I'd be happy to meet you. And, uh and again, going back to the school thing, that's um, something I really believe in, uh, making a presence in the school. And um, I'll continue to do that. So again, if um, anyone's watching this uh, show and they do see me in the school, so, um, please feel free to stop me. Stop and, uh, and say hi. Stop and say hi. It's uh, appreciated on my side as well. So, Excellent, excellent. Yeah. And, and, and um, I think over the years we found that this, this uh, open communication has, yep. been, has been very helpful yes. in, in dealing with with various issues that, right. that that might come up, it yeah. really is an integral part of 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 policing on a local level. Yep. Yeah. And and um, you know it. And we're small enough a community in that our even though we we, we have two residents. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you're still able to communicate. Correct. And yeah. I mean, if if individuals are not able to come during the daytime, well. They, you yep. call your partner. Correct. Absolutely. I mean, yep. it's it's not, yep. it's not a it's not an issue. There's right. there, there, there's someone there, that 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 um, you know, 
that can you can talk to and, and hopefully yeah. work things out for you. Right. Um, well, we're really really happy to have you. And thank you. And the other thing that really pleased me was when I looked at the name. I says, "Oh, another Italian in, in the family. <laughs> that's that's very nice." That's uh, correct. <laughs> yep. We. Uh, um, I guess I'm slightly prejudiced on that matter, but. Again, thank you for coming today, and I hope I hope folks listening to the program have, have uh, gained a uh, a good sense of what your what you do, and how you operate here, and feel comfortable enough that they and as we talk, uh, if they want to have an issue, have a concern, that they can call you absolutely, uh, and and uh, meet and and hopefully. Um, Resolve issues before they become serious issues. Right. Uh, that's that's part of what we have. Well, again, thank you again. Right. And um, I see our, our time is running out. I just like to uh, remind <clears throat> remind our folks to uh, stay keep in touch with our Bolton website because this coming month, the month of April, is a very important month for our taxpayers because. Our, um, all our budgets are being set. All the hearings are being set. So if you, if you go to the Bolton website, uh, check and see when, when me, uh, meetings are out there. Uh, they're very important. They impact you. They impact your taxes. And we want to provide you as much as information as we can. So um, please, please do that and please check it out. And with that, thank you again. And uh, our, ho our real hostess will be back in two weeks for her show. <laughs>